Hello, I'm Dr. Gloria Horsley, and I'm her daughter, Dr. Heidi Horsley. Heidi and I want to welcome you to Open to Hope Conversations, the podcast. We believe that the greatest gift you can give yourself after a loss is hope, using this moment to connect with others who have not only survived, but thrived. So let's get started. Welcome to the Open to Hope Show. I'm your host, Dr. Gloria Horsley, with my daughter and co-host. Dr. Heidi Horsley. Heidi, we have got such a great friend today and someone we've known for a long time to, through the Compassion of Friends. And we're going to talk today about the healing power of service, because this is a woman who has given so much service in memory of her daughter, Nina, and her uh, stepson, Chris. So let, why don't you introduce her, Heidi? Okay, I'd love to. Like you said, we've known her for many, many years, and mm -hmm. she is such a great example of the healing power of service. So Kathy C. Hutter will be joining us today. She is a bereaved parent and lost her 15-year-old daughter, Nina, who was killed in a drunk driving accident, and her stepson, Christopher, who was an undercover police officer and died by suicide. Kathy today is the Director of Online Services for the Compassionate Friends. She's been a chapter leader for the St. Paul, Minnesota chapter. She was a former board member and served with you, mom, mm -hmm. on the board of directors for the Compassionate Friends. And she received the Compassionate Friends prestigious recognition award in 2015. Kathy has also chaired two Compassionate Friends national conferences, done dozens and dozens and hundreds of workshops and speeches. <laughs> and I mean, she's served at every level. So welcome to the show, Kathy. Oh my gosh, I am so excited to be here with the two of you. Oh, such dear friends. Let's talk about um, the things you've done over the years. My gosh, uh, Gloria and Heidi and Heather and now Rebecca and Phil and, you know, so it's just a real honor to be here. Thank you for asking me. Uh, thank you. You know, Heidi and I have been talking recently about some research that's been done that the number two things are really helpful in a loss. And one of them is peer support. And one of them, the second is information and the compassionate friends does such a great job of peer support. But I want to, for people who are listening to this or watching it, I would like to kind of have you tell how you started out and how you, how they, so they can get the feel for how they could maybe chime in and do something and, and what it does for you to do service. Well, you know, Gloria, um, I think back, you know, and it, it's been, it'll be, well, actually it's been over 26 years mm -hmm. since Nina died and I can hardly believe that to begin with, but I have been with Compassion Friends. I went to my first meeting. Um, I think it was a month afterwards. It's one of those things I knew that I had had to find my people. I had to find people that, you know, got it. And so at an early, relatively early uh, time, I did join the St. Paul chapter of Compassion Friends. And um, I remember coming home that day and feeling elated. And I thought to myself, this isn't right. But, you know, everybody in my household was going, oh my gosh, Bob, I mean, you seem like you're, you know, you're so happy. And I said, happy isn't the word, but I found my people mm -hmm. and people that could, I could relate to, they could relate to me when I said something, their eyes didn't glaze over and be like, oh boy, there she goes again. You know, shouldn't she be over it? It's been four weeks, you know, that sort of thing. So just compassion friends itself to begin with. Um, I couldn't wait. I wanted to go back the next day and the day after that. And, uh, I haven't, haven't looked back since that time, but I remember uh, distinctly watching the chapter leaders and, and watching um, all the steering committee members and thinking, my gosh, you know, they're, they're laughing, which I couldn't believe that. First of all, when I first came in the meeting, I thought to myself, I, I'm never going to laugh again. I'm never going to smile again. Um, and I must be in the wrong room because these people could not have lost children, siblings, and grandchildren. And, uh, but, you know, it did take me long to figure out that yes, they had. And um, 
a good portion of that, of course, was they took care of their grief um, through this peer-to-peer -peer sort of support. But also, I learned that by, and, and this phrase, I don't mean it to sound trite, because it really isn't, but helping is healing mm. is absolutely true. It, it has been for me, but I know it's been for thousands and hundreds and thousands of other people as well. And uh, I said to the chapter leader, I think I'd only been there like maybe three weeks. I said, you know what? I think I'd really like to facilitate. <laughs> and, <laughs> and uh, you know, what else can I do? And I, I'll have to, you know, I have to hand it to her and I've given the same and I would imagine you maybe do too, is that she very gently said, you know, Kathy, um, I think someday that is exactly what you'll do and probably more. And she said, but right now you really need to concentrate on your own, your mm -hmm. own grief and your own healing and, um, and a gift. Yeah. And you know, and that really was because I was determined, man, you know, I think I've got something to give, you know, a lot of us are really gung ho. It's like and getting it, back on the horse, you know, after you fall off and it's not that exactly process yeah and you want to you want to look competent because you're falling apart absolutely for sure and i wanted to also be those people that were helping around there and i had so much respect for them and i was drawn to them and i thought you know out of this something's got to there's got to be a positive somewhere here because i can't see it at all anymore but when I see saw those people and people going up to them and you know, an arm around them or you know just zeroing in and really listening to them, that really spoke to me. I love that you felt that you you know felt like you were heard and that you were seeing that these people understood you and that you felt like you were you know you had found your people because your personal story is very traumatic. Mm -hmm. And the fact that you were able to find people that understood is saying a lot. I mean, you were in Florida on vacation with your family in the car when a drunk driver hit the car on your birthday and your daughter, your 15 year old daughter was killed. And um, you were there. I mean, that is really significant. I mean, even as we speak, I see that you're getting, you know, it's, it's emotional to relive that, right? To think about that. And yet you found a place where people could meet you where you where you were and take the journey with you back into hope and that's pretty big i think that's what compassionate friends does yeah huge oh, it absolutely does and then you have to have somebody also i uh, you remembering that was back in 1995 and yes you know we were definitely out there compassionate friends was but you know i think we get more recognition as time has gone on and it's quite amazing me too when i think in these 26 years but I was fortunate that when I got back to the Twin Cities after um, Nina was killed, um, the funeral director happened to have a connection with the connection. You know, I live in Cottage Grove, which is a city of 37,000. So it's not a really huge town. And here, Ron uh, Troyer, who was a funeral director that I worked with, uh, was the, what we call the professional advisor for the St. Paul chapter. How great. And yes, and so with all that went on, you know, in our community when uh, Nina died, she was Miss Teen Cottage Grove. She was the president of her uh, freshman class. She had been reelected to be sophomore, actually the day that she died in Florida. Oh, wow. She was just one of these kids, you know, 15 and we say petite but powerful. She was a little bit of a thing and, mm -hmm. um, but she had just, uh, she was an old soul, you know, she just really had a compassion heart and she was chosen to be peer counselor so that, you know, kids could come to her when they were having, um, you know, difficulties. And uh, so he, you know, there was quite, uh, this was one of the first kids I think that had actually died in there and the high school here. And so it was quite a, quite a, a, a thing, the funeral and everything. And, um, but he, uh, he was just fantastic. You know, the principal didn't want to have the, the principal didn't want to have the kids be able to go and come to the funeral. And, you know, he went and talked to them because he knew how important it was for them to be a part of this for their grieving. 
and uh, he was magnificent, but he said to me, I remember so clearly, he said, there's a group in town called the Compassion Friends, and they are a support group for bereaved parents, siblings, and grandparents, and that someday, I, someday you are going to be an important part of that. Yeah, I want to fast forward to the first conference you went to. Yes, that was we 1999. That is, yes. I mean, there are maybe 1,500 people there, right? Or I, I, I believe wow. it was around 12, 1,300, yeah. So that was in 1999, so that was four years after. My parents actually, as a special trip, took me to Portland. That's where it was in 99. And uh, actually, Ron, the funeral director, was at there giving a workshop um, on uh, homicide. Um, losing your child in that way and so you know he's the reason I found that group and I just knew that I wanted to go to this conference and uh, actually Gloria and Heidi uh, I haven't missed one yet so wow. from 1999 until up to the present that's amazing I one of the most touching things I've heard a participant at one of the um, conferences, which I love. The conferences are wonderful. But she said, I love it because it's four days I can spend with my child. Absolutely. And I think for those people that are listening that are early on in their grief, some of them can think, wow, wait a minute, 20 plus years and she's still going. But <laughs> our roles change, mm -hmm. you know, whereas we were kind of sitting back and getting a lot of support as we move through our journey, we start giving more and more support to others and being the hope for people. And early on in our grief, we have to hold on to other, to people that are further along in their grief journey as lifelines, I think. Heidi, can you talk about the sibling program, what it's meant to you at Compassionate Friends? Well, the sibling program is an amazing program of brief siblings. And, you know, as Kathy has kind of said today, just being in that group, even if you're not speaking, you know, you're with your people. You're with people that get it. They understand what it's like to lose a brother or sister. And we have a lot of fun. We have a lot of mm -hmm. tears. We have a lot of joy. We talk, we don't talk. There's a lot of activities. And we, you know, a, a lot of the people that I've met are my chosen family now. Oh my family. gosh. And yeah, that's a, one of them. <laughs> uh, well, you know, that's what I was thinking with the, you know, you can, it's their one year, you know, they're annually. And so you can, pick up right where you left off a year later with those people that you have met at the conference that you've become friends with. And it's like, you've never had that distance. I, I don't even know how to explain that, but um, it's just a wonderful connection with people. who it's, you know, so, it's so deep. Nobody cares it, yes, what right. anybody does for a living or anything. Sometimes you don't you, we don't know the living, we know the life. We know, you know, we're brought together through finding hope. Yeah, through absolutely. The, it's a hopeful thing where you're in peer support, you're getting information and those important things. Would you talk a little bit about what's going online for people, Kathy? You know, I know Heidi loves the sounds of siblings, which is a sibling uh, Facebook page, right? Yes, that and TCF Sibs. TCF Sibs is a, is a newer one. We also have a sibling loss uh, for those who have lost their brothers or sisters to substance-related causes also. That's specifically for siblings. Um, so, yes, we have, I think it's 39. We're going to have wow. a 40th a private one that will be for COVID-19 uh, survivors. It's COVID-19 and other infectious diseases. So that could be influenza. You know, we actually know quite a few people in Compassionate Friends themselves that lost their children to influenza and the people don't even realize that, oh my gosh, well, you know, this is the stomach flu. This is something very similar to COVID-19. Right. So we have a lot of online resources. We also have um, still all these years, our live chat that um, still is together. And many of those moderators have been around for, many, many, many years. So um, for those who can't get to a chapter meeting or, you know, who lives rurally, 24 seven, you always have somebody online who just wants to reach out and, and help and be listened to also. That's, that's yeah. amazing. I, I wanted to say something, um, make sure that I, we talk a little bit about Christopher. I don't want to overlook him. 
Right. So Nina died. And then how many years after Nina was killed did Christopher, your stepson, die? 17. 17 years. Mm -hmm. I know he was an undercover police officer doing very unbelievable work. And he died by suicide. And I'm sure, did you want to say something else, Kathy, about him? Christopher, um, yeah, that Chris, he was a real practical joker. And uh, he wanted to be a police officer from the time he was four years old. And I kid you not, that never, ever, he never wavered from that ever. And that was his lifelong dream. His, his dad knew a lot of policemen in the St. Paul department. And uh, he first started out with Richfield, but then he did, he was accepted by the St. Paul police department. And I tell you to that day, that I think that was the best day of his life. And mm -hmm. I have a great picture of him with the mayor of St. Paul and the police chief. There he is, uh, you know, got his badge. And um, so he was a very proud St. Paul police officer and had hoped to be with K-9. That was his. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, uh, he actually had taken a test and was going to be getting the results on that. And he would have been a canine police officer, but he took his own life before that. And before so Kathy, life. Kathy, did you dive back into compassionate friends again on a different level? Well, you know, an addition was my trying to help with uh, the suicide part of it. And the language was a big a big thing for me is that I learned firsthand what it was like stigma and uh, the language um, of the, the committed suicide. And some people are fine with that. And that's okay if you are, but the preferred is died by suicide. And that was kind of a crusade I took up. Did you learn anything from Nina's death that helped you navigate Christopher's loss? It's really interesting when the police came to the door to tell us uh, that early morning. Um, I remember thinking to myself, not shortly after that, well, we have been through this and we know that we can survive because we've done it once already. Yeah. And, um, and I kind of carry that with me, whereas with Nina, we had no. Uh, you don't know if you're going to live. Yeah. No, and, and nor do you know if you would really want to at that point. Exactly. exactly. Uh, well, Kathy, you bring so much hope to the world and all that. And Aww. we are so looking forward to being with you this summer at the Compassionate Friends National yeah. Conference. Can you tell people where it's going to be and how they can find the Compassionate Friends? There's also information on our national website about the conference, which will be August 5th to the 7th this year, and it will be in Houston. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are just so excited. And you know, we had two wonderful virtual conferences. So I am not taking away from virtual. There's a lot of wonderful reasons. Thank goodness we had that ability because otherwise we wouldn't have had a conference at all. But a lot of people like all of us that are on here today are missing those hugs and those people that we get to see um, once every year. And uh, so we're hoping and hoping we're, we're in the middle of planning everything right now. And uh, have some wonderful uh, keynotes that we're working on right now and, and new workshops. And I think we had 125 workshops, a virtual one. And so uh, we really, really hope that people will look at that on the website and, and think about joining because, I mean, if I've gone every year since 1999, I hope it that is. says something about it. Just well, we hope that, that everybody who's listening to this and joining us will tell friends and family about it. It's a wonderful uh, four days of healing and finding hope. And Heidi and I will certainly be there. Well, we're looking forward to seeing you then. And thank you for being of service and showing the power of service and how you just uh, go on and bring so much hope to people. We love oh, you. Thank you so much. It's an honor and privilege to do that. Thanks, Kathy. Thank you for being such a bright light in so many people's lives. Thank you, Heidi. Love you. I love you both. And thanks, everybody, for joining us today. And Heidi and I hope you'll visit us at opentohope.com and also the compassionatefriends.org. And Heidi and I always want to remind you that if you've lost hope, please lean on ours until you find your own. And God bless. I'm Dr. Heidi Horsley. You have been listening to Open to Hope, the podcast. 
You can follow Open to Hope on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. To learn more, visit us at opentohope.com and go to Apple Podcasts to subscribe. I'm Dr. Gloria Horsley. Join us again next week for another Open to Hope conversation, where we invite you to lean on our hope until you find your own.